welcome to the Sky Food Channel. Today we are in Tatsutat University. Yes, Tatsutat University. Yeah, a little outside Bangkok with Justin Whittle. Yeah. He's a researcher about this beetle in the box here. That's the red palm weevil. Correct. Whoa, look at this. I hope he's not flying away, otherwise all the palms here are dying <laughs> in one <laughs> <laughs> yes, we will have because, an infestation, yeah. Because they're really a bad pest insect. Yes, right? yes, this is an economic pest. Are you researching about the pest insect, red palm weevil, uh, or about the food item? Yeah, yeah, so thank you very much for having me. Uh, so this is, this, I'm researching about farming, intensive farming of this insect for food and for feed industries in Thailand. So I'm not looking at them as a pest, I'm looking at them as an economic advantage for economy. So mostly if an insect is a pest, we know a lot of them, about them already, because mm. we want to fight against them and you have to know the, your fiend, you know. So, uh, so what do we know about the palm weevil as a food item already? Mm. Is a lot known mm. already? Well, currently there is not actually a lot known about red palm weevil as a food source. Uh, when you look at entomophagy, the major ones are silkworm, crickets. Uh, this is still quite a new food uh, for the Western world. Uh, but we see now in the last 10 years there's been increasing farming and increasing consumption of this insect larvae uh, in Thailand, in Malaysia, in Papua New Guinea and some places in Africa. So it's an uh, increasing food source uh, happening now, but still relatively low research on this. So is it li like a little bit the same like with crickets that 20 years ago they were collected from the wild, mm. but now step by step people try to cultivate and domesticate them um, mm. and, and uh, cultivate them? It's the same. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's the same sort of process. There's actually a lot of literature on you know, 20, 100 years ago of uh, explorers in Papua New Guinea who saw this and took notes of the local inhabitants eating it. Uh, so for a century or so, they have been actually wild harvested in the rotting palms on the ground. The lo and still today, they still, it's a still common practice. But in Thailand, it is the first country reported to actually intensively farm this insect uh, in farms and in sheds, um, creating high yields. And actually, this insect is one of only possibly three insects in the world that we know that can be intensively reared for human consumption. So you are not from Thailand, that's what we hear. Actually, you come from Australia. Yes. And what was the reason that you were sent here from Australia mm. to Thailand to yes. make this kind of work? Yeah, I, well, from a, I actually study in Australia. I researched, I study agriculture. Agriculture, yeah. Um, and my love for innovation and new food systems, when I was researching this, I came across entomophagy. And I just found this insect um, in a report in 2013 and 2012 and not a lot of information on it. So I just became more and more interested to come over to Thailand and to unlock some new information about this insect that I've only heard local reports about. Mm. So you also found a support in a professor that uh, said, yeah, that's okay for Justin. Yes, so we sent him to Thailand. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. Also, you must find some support. Yeah, that yeah. You can start a research project like this. So, my, uh, the Australian government uh, supported okay. um, students in Australia. Um, if, they had a, if they looked like they wanted to go to Asia to research, they invested uh, a lot of money into the new Colombo plan. And so, I'm one of the scholars for this program. What is, does it mean, new Colombo plan? What's that? So the Australian government's New Colombo Plan is an initiative uh, to increase Australia's... <laughs> Should we wait after the plane? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. So that's not a flying red palm weevil, it's made from metal. So, <laughs> yes. so uh, what yes, is sorry. actually the question about the Colombo Plan? Yeah, what, so what the Australian the government made the New Colombo Plan, which is an initiative to increase Australia's involvement in Asia 
we want to see greater relationships between oh, okay. Australia and Asia. Um, so I'm one of the scholars to research um, agriculture and research edible insects in Thailand. Very nice. So uh, your work about the uh, red palm weevil was uh, what 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 is involved in that research? Yeah. Uh, so basically, before I came to Thailand, there's only been about one paper, um, not research paper, just a paper that had been produced in the FAO journal to um, that explains farming of this insect in southern Thailand. Um, so I was interested to understand what is the current situation of red palm weevil farming throughout Thailand. So in Thailand I've been researching the geographical spread of the mm -hmm. farms. Um, I've also been looking at the substrate formula that farmers are using to produce these worms. And I'm also looking how are they being consumed as well. So that is my research project in Thailand. So let's take talk about the first uh, part is the distribution. Mm. Uh, 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 what's about distribution? Yes. Where in the north does it end? Yeah, yeah. So currently my research found that um, since a paper, the localized farms used to be in southern Thailand. Um, now my research shows that it's being distributed up into central I, Thailand okay. and up north to Chiang, Chiang Rai, so up to the Already? border. Okay. Yeah, so it's spreading quite in the past three years. It's been spreading all the way up north um, throughout Thailand. And what is the, what about substrates? Mm -hmm. um, and it's called also the soko worm. Mm -hmm. So it, and said that it was primarily found in soko palms which are high in, um, in carbon dioxide, yes. uh, carb carbohydrate, carbohydrate. Yes. hydrates. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, this, this insect, the red palm weevil, goes by many names. It goes by sago worm. Uh, in Thailand, they call it duoma plow, which means coconut beetle. Okay. Um, and uh, you know, um, a duan uh, beetle. So they have many names and local people use different names for them. Uh, but the reason for why we see the spread in the past three years is because we noticed in the research that a lot of farmers up in central and uh, northern Thailand are using different formulas than what has been recorded in the mm -hmm. south. Mm -hmm. So that's bit, there's been this um, relationship between spread of the industry and also using different substrates and formulas. And how mm -hmm. different are the substrates? Are mm -hmm. they not uh, based on uh, cocoa, not uh, sawdust anymore? Um, so y the conventional way of farming um, uses the sago palm mm -hmm. uh, as it's the major food for the red palm weevil. What my research found is in central Thailand, the predominantly farmers will use coconut, fresh coconut, okay. um, as the major source of the carbohydrate. Nuts? itself or the stem of the or the wood of it the fruit the fruit okay so the the green and fleshy fruit okay um and in far north thailand what we see is they use cassava okay as the major diet source for uh for this bug so the roots of the cassava plant mm -hmm. okay. so the tubers of the cassava plant. Or, the, or the flour made from it uh so they use a combination of the the flour and also the pulp that you oh, okay. th that they use for the feed industries. Okay. Um, so they also so we know that in North Thailand they use the coconut, fresh coconut. Yeah. Okay. And the cassava. So that's interesting. It shows also that Runcophorus ferrucune is not a picky insect. In yes. Fact. yes. So it can be probably adapted easily to some kind of new artificial substrate mm. mixtures. Mm. Right? Mm. It's, yeah, it's very interesting because this insect is one of the most <laughs> ingenious insects. It's the most hardest to destroy yeah. um, and it's one of the most invasive yeah. uh, to the pest yeah. uh, palm industry. And that's because uh, it's very good at adapting to new changes yeah. and changes in environment. So it's very, um, it's very correct what you said about that. So actually it spread also to Europe to the southern part of Europe, to the islands in the Mediterranean mm. Sea, Mallorca, the, and also to the 
to uh, Tenerife, uh, mm. all this. Yes, stuff. we do know now that the geographical spread of this species is now. Uh, there's been reports in America, California, yeah. and now it is gone through uh, the Mediterranean region into yeah. into the Middle East. So in the past 20 so it's years, around the world in a mm. in a strip where yes. the palm trees are are growing. Are growing. Yes. So but they are not yet reported from other kind of trees, or are they? Um, not not really. Uh, you only usually see the family of palms that mm -hmm. this insect is associated with. Yeah, but not only the sago palm. Mm, no, we have you can even coconut palm, dead palm. You have uh, oil palm. Okay. Um, many different fa palm varieties. This will affect. Um, even, even ornamental, ornamental palms, palms. Okay. Um, which we use in our gardens, this insect will also attack. So now you're so, no, you are uh, in the process of uh, defining new recipes mm. for for substrates. Mm, mm, mm. And um, what, what do you you know now about uh, the ingredients of a good substrate for Runchophorus ferruginus? Yes. I also ask every. Every time when I watched all these different videos I've seen and the information that um, some put in pig feed mm. or molassi, mm. they put in flour from cassava, but always with sawdust mm. material as a base. So mm -hmm. I wondered whether we can change all the base material. Right? Yeah, yeah. The, well, from my research, um, as I said, the coconut diet, the uh, cassava diet mm -hmm. and sago diet are the three major diets in Thailand. From my understanding, I think my research shows that the coconut diet shows the best um, value in terms of the input cost of mm -hmm. the diet is relatively low and also the production is nearly the same as the cassava. Um, but a little less than the sagu diet. So you also would say that uh, coconut wood is a more sustainable way of producing? Uh, um, I wouldn't say uh, it's the it's coconut it's fruit, yes, I think it's a... Uh, you're talking about the fruit? The fruit, Okay. yes, the coconut... Not, you're talking not about the sawdust of the, of the wood? No, the, no, in this diet they don't use the actual coconut tree or brand. Okay. They yes. only use the waste product okay of the fruits that you okay. have in the, the coconut water. Okay. Mm. So it's an, this diet is actually using the byproduct of an industry. Mm -hmm. So that is why I see it as one of the most advantages of this coconut diet. It's the most sustainable mm -hmm. out of all the feeds for red palm weasel. And also the feed of this insect is not in concurrence with humans. So it's not eating things that we can digest also and use as our food, like crickets, mm. where you give food for chicken, and chicken feed is high in protein, so it's the same that you can also eat as a human. Yeah. You cannot eat the coconut shells, you know. Mm. Uh, yeah, we know, we know in the entomophagy industry there's a big debate about um, competition between food, a feed that's already been used for livestock, yeah. and food for insects. Um, and the this is why this insect I think is very interesting because you can see that it's reared on so many different substrates um, and the coconut diet is possibly, as you mentioned, it's a byproduct of the coconut water mm -hmm. process. So it's actually beneficial for many industries. We don't compete with local uh, feedstocks. What is actually in this coconut diet? Mm. Um, there, there's fiber material in cellulose, probably uh, wood, wooden uh, cellulose material. And uh, what is is the sugar inside there too, or so, uh, and proteins? Mm -mm. So what is the mixture of the substrate? Yeah. So the formula that we found that some farmers are using is they use about two two kilograms of shredded coconut fruit, so yeah. the green fresh fruit. After that, they'll add three to four liters of water mm -hmm. um, with about two tablespoons of molasses and also about half a kilogram of pig feed. So this is, usually this mm -hmm. is the diet that they will use um, 
to create this uh, larvae. That's also what they show that uh, farm in uh, the agricultural farm in Chumpon. Mm -mm. It's kind of the same mm -mm -mm. Uh, substrate. And why pig feed? Mm, yeah. What, what is about this pig feed stuff? What is interesting is the protein content of it, or what is interesting? So, about the pig feed? what we know about um, this in um, insect is the instars of the pupa in the beginning of their life they really need a high source of protein yeah um, and currently the diet the coconut and uh, other sources only provide carbohydrates yeah, yeah. so in the first couple of weeks of uh, breeding this insect they need that high protein to mm -hmm. get the fatter grub to get a bigger grub okay. so we know that the pig feed is a cheap alternative to getting that high protein source and quite frankly it's very accessible anywhere in Thailand. Also I found that it's rotting very fast, the substrate for uh, for I've seen it in Chumpong, it was a really stinky substrate. Mm, mm, mm. Um, in some other beetles we find that they, have, they must have very uh, aerobe substrates to survive and I also wondered why this larva can survive in kind of anaerobe uh, rotting um, substrates and yeah. very wet. Also. Yes, yeah. The, well, in in the nature, um, they basically uh, carve out holes into the trunks and essentially live in these dense uh, environments where it's wet. So they thrive on these kinds of anaerobic mm -hmm. conditions. Um, but uh, yeah, we we just know that they can deal with these different environmental changes and in the farms that we visited they put them in the shade location in a shady spot and it needs to be, if it's too cold we know that the larvae will die if it's too hot the larvae will also die so um, they love a temperate so what range condition. about 15 to 35 about 20 to about 35 30. yeah okay. we we know that this kind of condition the tropical temperature yeah. is ideal for this insect um to for to grow the larvae that we need um, we also know in uh, some places in northern thailand um, some farmers will add rice husk yep um, to increase the heat okay. in the food source. Yeah, okay. Uh, so there's many different ways in people how they adjust the temperature yeah. of the environment. So here you should not be afraid to also make a foul kind of a substrate mm. for them because in other breeding substrates for people we find that it's good to prevent them from from stinky foully substrates. Mm. So, uh, yeah, it's very interesting because um, as you mentioned, some farms, the farm you visited has a very strong odor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it can be quite unpleasant. Yeah, Even yeah. when you work with it, you have the, the smell on your hand yeah, for a yeah, week. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's looks and feels like shit. Yes, you know, in fact. yes. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's very... <laughs> <laughs> some, uh, some researchers call it baby vomit. Yeah, um, oh, yeah, that's yes, <laughs> baby yes, vomit. Yes, yes. <laughs> it, and it has that very off-putting smell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but actually, the far, what I've encountered is the pig feed, when it ferments, it produces this odor. Okay. But actually, the sago pith, yeah. the sago trunk, it is the reason why it creates this odor, this okay. strong, foul smell. Okay. So actually, the coconut diet and also the cassava diet has not... It's not as odorous, okay. and actually it can be quite pleasant, we okay. actually know. Also, what we do know is some farmers will add pandan leaves, and um, they also provide their own secret formulas okay. to decrease the smell in their farms. Okay. Mm. So also some put the larvae uh, two days before harvesting into a separate uh, place where they uh, stay in a more aerated a substrate um, so that they can clean out their gut content and and put away their bad smell you know yeah you should so uh, post harvest of this insect is still quite a new okay. a new idea and not many farmers know what's the best way to do yep. it um, what uh, some farmers do currently is they will collect the larvae straight away and they will put it in fresh water in the water or salty water mm -hmm. To clean out the the feces track yeah. and to 
get rid of that smell. Other farmers, what they will do is when they collect, they will put it into another breeding mm -hmm, mm -hmm. captive with possibly banana, with pumpkin, with yep. papaya, some fruit. Yeah, yeah, okay. That will have a pleasant smell yep. with the with uh, the larvae. Similar to the processing of crickets, also or or field crickets, ah. that also can have a, a strong smell. Mm. And to get rid of it, they put in some uh, carrots, or they they reduce the feed, the normal feed, mm. so that they have a cleaning face, like like the uh, what they are called the carps, the, the big fish. Oh, the big carp, yeah. yeah. Carp, also, yes. they you put them two days, three days in fresh water, yeah. so that they get rid of their bad smell. You know? Yeah, yeah. But I, but the strange thing is, um, well, not the strange thing. The unique thing is in southern Thailand. The larvae is a delicacy, yeah, yeah. and the people love this, yeah. the, the worm of this. So actually, some farms just sell it fresh. Okay. They collect it and sell it fresh yeah. to the people. Okay. Okay. So, so yeah, it, it really depends on preference, but uh, <laughs> still post-harvest of this insect is still a major problem yeah. we face uh, in getting healthy standards for export potential. Also in Europe, there's a lot of discussion about food safety, ex yeah, especially about the gut content of the insect because you cannot slaughter them traditionally like a cow mm. or pig that you remove the gut contract and everything at the stomach. So, mm. so uh, what about um, harvesting the pupa? Mm, mm. Well, well, actually, the pupa is a very interesting because. Um, but not many people eat the pupa because they actually prefer them to go to adult mm -hmm. so then they can far sell okay. the adult yeah, okay. um, to get more income. Yeah, okay. um, but actually people do eat the pupa and it sells at quite a very high price. Okay. I, I believe it can sell for nearly 1,000 baht per kilogram. Okay, that's ex so it's really expensive. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. actually a delicacy, yeah. the pupa. Um, but uh, how they harvest it is, what uh, the farmer will do, they will take some larvae, maybe 20% of the bucket, they will put it in another bucket to rear and to put in a pupa, yep. um, and then transform That's it for the adult. parents of the next generation. Then. Yes, oh, okay. and, but they don't use the same diet. Local yep. farmers call it the, um, the red palm weevil or condo. Okay, the condo. <laughs> Sometimes they call okay. it the coconut condo. Okay. And basically what they do is they use the dry husk of the coconut mm -hmm. and they stack them on top of each other. And in between these layers, they will use the old diet and mm -hmm. make it like a cement. Okay. And, uh, the dry coconut, the old stock feed, so dry coconut. It's like a food. mortar. Wall building, yeah, <laughs> that's why they call it the coconut condo. Ah, oh, condo, that's why yes, like condo. Yes, okay, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. So we are at the beginning of finding out what are the more cleverest, cleverest uh, breeding uh, methods for this insect. Yes, mm, yes. So the, this, yeah, this, this, this the insect. start of it, of st start of the domestication of uh, an insect. Mm. And I think, I think when we talk about insects as well, they are very fussy eaters. Mm -hmm. uh, the breeders would know uh, it's, you can spend months trying to breed something and they just die. Yeah. But this is one insect that I found that really can adapt to the yeah. new environments and really um, can be fed on so many possibilities that we just don't know yet. Yeah, yeah. Um, and hopefully with more research and more breeders, uh, we can actually get this more information out. Mm. So what is the next step? After you publish now your work in the Feed and Food uh, uh, Journal, yes, Journal of yes. the FAO, yes. that is really nice. I hope I can give you the address where you can order it then. Yes, yes. Uh, what do you think will happen with that? So what, what for you can use mm, mm. your study? So what I hope my research and study will do is to actually show, show people that this, this insect has opportunity, it has potential, mm -hmm. not just for Asia, but through the Mediterranean. We, we know this has spread throughout the world in the tropical zone. Why can't we utilize it in the tropical zone? Why is it only being farmed in Thailand? Mm -hmm. uh, and, but we do know it is farmed in Ghana and Cameroon, but 
but why aren't we looking more at this as a food source mm -hmm. and food source for stock? Why? So I hope my research can show people that it's a growing in Thailand. We know it's growing and spreading throughout Thailand. And now we just need to figure out, well, what's the next step? What can we do as an industry to try and support farmers and support export potentials? Yes. So one of the steps we have to take for that is to bring the people over their fear from the pest insect also, because at the moment in Europe, Runchophorus ferruginus is mostly discussed as a pest insect, mm. and everybody wants to get rid of it mm. and not uh, cultivate it. Now that's an interesting fact that pra yeah, practically most of the insects we are eating now are in fact pest insects, mm. like grasshoppers, uh, they, they, are, they are falling into the rice field, so mm. the best method of um, working against them is eating them. Yeah. So yeah. Um, people found out that long time ago that this is a good method that they just call, uh, eat, mm. eat them. So it's the same with the palm eater too. Mm. So it's a pest insect, but the best way to get rid of it brought is to eat it, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, it's been, it's a, the very interesting thing about Thailand's situation is it is considered a secondary pest to a, the palm industry. A secondary? What does it mean, secondary? So basically, we, our red palm weevil is, the reason why it's been um, promoted is because it's not the primary source of the death of palms. We know the rhinoceros beetle okay, yeah. creates the hole in the wound okay, in the plant. Okay. And this is, a, this is the secondary okay, predator. Okay. It's, once the rhinoceros beetle leaves, it leaves the scar. Yeah. So then this will take that place. Oh, okay. So the, in Thailand, and I don't know if we can adapt this to other countries, but the, the way they've got around this situation okay. is that this is not the primary pest. This is a secondary pest. Okay. But also the rhinoceros beetle is eaten, so... Mm, uh, yeah, yeah also, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So if, yeah. They found, if they find larvas of the rhinoceros beetle in a tree trunk, they also eat them. Mm, you know, mm, mm. And, yeah, and uh, we know even the farmers, they ha because we go to these farms and we see what is your pest management uh, yeah. to control this pest? How, yeah. how do we know it's not going to escape? And um, farmers, most farmers will say they they are very difficult and very can escape easily, yeah. but you can contain them quite easily yeah. as well. So. A lot of the farms we meet, they have hundreds of these larvae. Yeah. <laughs> and you think... In an a... orchard of palms. Yeah, yeah of in an orchard of coconut yeah. palms. Yeah. And you think, how would the farmers not yeah. knocking on the yeah. door? <laughs> okay. And, okay, yeah, but, that's an interesting yeah, fact also. But they don't have this issue. Yeah, yeah. 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 So uh, um, I guess in Europe, we will. it will be difficult to officially breed them. Mm. Because uh, the, the mania that they destroy palms is too big, you know. Mm. Because palm is a decorative tree mm. mostly. It's mm. made for the tourism industry. Plant it there, you know. So that's yeah. yeah, it's not a natural tree. Yeah, and I think I think the way to overcome that, especially in the Europe case and in other countries, is to really um, show the examples of Thailand and to show this research and the study that I've done and show them that. You know, it is a secondary pest. We're yeah. not looking at it. And it can be controlled and monitored. The one thing that we know in the world is it's spreading fast. But actually, eating insects is actually a biological way to control of course. Yeah, okay, the spread of yeah, insects. Yeah. So we need to change people's way and how they think about this issue. And it's also uh, a very sustainable source of animal protein and fats. Mm. Uh, it, it's in that frame of of aims of the FAO mm -hmm. from changing, producing animal fats and proteins with uh, beef and chicken and so come to a more sustainable way of producing. Well, we, 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 ha we don't really know the nutritional benefits of this particular species. But if we look at Africa, um, they use the African palm weevil, which is very similar to this one. And what we do know is their nutritional content is, very, is about three times more energy than beef. Okay. So it's very high in fat, very high in okay. lipids. Um, and many researchers believe that this larvae can be very good for malnutrition and undernutrition yeah. um, in most countries. So um, it's 
because of its high fat content, it's actually not recommended uh, to eat, possibly um, in a lot of instances. Um, but because it does have a good protein content and not a hard chitin, high, high chitin content, protein will be easily digested in a, the human system. So mm -hmm. there's actually a lot of opportunities, not only for human nutrition, but also feedstock nutrition, yeah. like chickens, like fish and anything, things like that. And also it can be produced locally because the palm is it everywhere tree. Mm. Uh, so also in a local small farm, uh, people can breed it and rear it very easily, so that yeah. it's grown already in this low scale uh, project in yeah. Thailand. Well, we we do know that most of the farmers that that are in Thailand and they are growing. Um, there's about 97 registered farms we know today, uh, but it's possibly recommended that there's about 100 to 200 farms in Thailand that are producing red palm weevils. And what we know is they're quite small scale, and they're usually those new farmers that are trying to get um, do a new career, a new change of environment. So, uh, And they are hard to find on the market every day also. And I'm uh, here for three years, every year for one month, I didn't find living palm weevils on the market. Did you find them already somewhere? Um, living palm yeah. weevils? On uh, the market? On the market. But it is um, difficult yeah. actually to find. Um, I know um, the reason why it's difficult is because this grub is a big fat grub and a lot of people are off-putted by this um, insect because it's that creamy taste in your mouth and it explodes in your mouth. So, um, <laughs> so actually the they, it hasn't been quite successful in Bangkok, um, and you can't find okay. it in Bangkok, yeah, actually, yeah. it's very difficult. But when you do travel down to these um, northern places and in these south places, you can find them. And actually, they are now starting to pop up in the freezer section, yeah. in the supermarkets. Yeah, okay. Um, as a new, and this is only a recent development. Oh, okay. Thank you, Justin. Oh, Wiggle. I hope to see your study in the... Feed and how uh, about uh, insects for feed or food? Insects for feed and food journal. Insects for feed and food journal. And that we meet again, hopefully next time. So, how long is the study going on now here in Thailand? I have uh, three months left three months. Uh, to finish my 12 month students in Thailand. Um, but uh, also, thank you very much for yeah. Sky Foods for having me and sharing my knowledge about Red Time Weevil. And I hope uh, this video can help um, get more interest in this the potential for the farming of this insect. It will. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. <laughs>